There will be plenty of time to visit with the candidates. It's August in 2010. There's a gubernatorial candidate forum at Farm Fest near Redwood Falls. Everybody on Main Street, Minnesota knows that the health of Minnesota's economy depends on the health of agri agricultural economy. Indeed, almost four-fifths of the land in the Minnesota River Valley is devoted to agriculture. We're very dependent as a society worldwide on the, the food that's produced in the Minnesota River Basin. Row crops and livestock generated more than $13 billion in 2010. Agriculture is Minnesota's second largest industry and accounts for one-fifth of our jobs. The Minnesota River Basin up into the Red River Valley, there's what I would call the modern-day Fertile Crescent, where we've got a combination of the right soils and climate and rainfall and... Prime agricultural soil with not a lot of stones. It also holds water. It's a glacial lake clay and silt. So you have to tile it to farm it. Much of our drainage systems that have been installed are nothing more than stormwater removal systems, very similar to what most cities have. It's just a way of moving water off the landscape to make the land tellable. Our country would be starving if we didn't have tile to produce good crops to feed the people. Carl Goosey owns a second-generation farm in Wasika County on the banks of the Lesur River. This is the pond my dad put in in 1973. This was a big ravine. We made an earthen dike, and it catches all the silt and everything before it hits the river. In picking sites, that's definitely something to look at. And he carries on the conservation ethic he learned from his father. And I was at a meeting Leonard Binstock put on about ways that tile lines were going to be changing uh, in the future. Today is the first day for building a wood chip bioreactor at the edge of Carl's Fields. With cost share funds, county, state, and federal agencies are working with Carl to make the water cleaner that's coming from his drain tile. It's a relatively simple concept. It's capturing water from tile lines long enough so that it breaks down nutrients before it gets discharged to the stream. The use of a bioreactor has so many advantages in the removal of the nutrients that do percolate through the ground. Not much was taken out of production to do that. Enough? You have to maintain our ground so that is beneficial to everybody. The Minnesota comes south. Audrey Arner surveys her farm on the blufflands of the valley near Laquaparl. She and her husband, Richard Handeen, quit farming corn and soybeans way back in the 1970s. We had been spending time with uh, farmers who were affiliated with the Land Stewardship Project and the Sustainable Farming Association of Minnesota, and uh, many of those mentors affected our decision-making to manage grasslands. In doing that, we have learned to take the lesson from the Great Prairies, which has been to perennialize and to diversify. They think of their farm as a water catchment zone, and they build a dam to hold the stormwater and make a pond. Since we have perennialized the landscape, the springs run year-round. There's just less volume of water in the stream, even after a high rainfall event, because we're holding more of it. We don't apply phosphorus. We keep our animals some distance from the waterways, so that much of the nutrient that comes from them is absorbed in the paddocks, and so that doesn't make its way to the river. So that's pretty darn clear water by the time it hits the culvert. Audrey says the water in their pond is swimmable and fishable too. Most farmers love the land, and they may not all understand ecosystem processes in the same way, but uh, I think it's really important to listen to one another with an open heart, to foster biological diversity, to cycle nutrients in a way that doesn't contaminate the river and to effectively conserve, conserve, conserve our precious water resources.